Even in a city like Portland with riots seemingly every night, good, sane, sober, moral, prudent people need to be able to defend themselves. Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I am, as always, your host, John Correa. Today's video, like I said, comes to us from Portland, Oregon. Now more than ever, you need trusted coverage to help you win the fight after the fight. The company I trust and recommend is Firearms Legal Protection. They offer discounts on all their plans at the link in the description. I recommend the premium plan. Our perp is off camera to the left here. What we see is we see inside this laundromat, there's a couple of employees here. And if you go read the news story that I've linked in the description, our perp has had multiple 911 calls on him, multiple, because he has been walking down the street, threatening people with a big old saw and, uh, you know, swinging it at people and, and talking crazy at bystanders. And so they've had multiple 911 calls. Police are looking for him, but they don't find him in time. What you're going to see him is you're going to see him come in from the left-hand side there. And you can see the fact that he has that big old saw in his hands. And there are two employees here, two uh, young ladies, and you can see the one right middle screen and kind of near the top that he is just walking up to with purpose and she's like what is going on with this guy and he's just going to take that sword and literally hit her in the head and the other employee is going to check on her are you okay then he's going to slash her in the arm and both of them kind of run off and now he's going to run outside here and actually it cost a couple of more people and you see them they kind of maintain their distance now we watch it one more time watch him run up here and just Take a huge slash at the first girl, never having seen her before in his life, or this other one slashes her on her arm. And now he's going to run out and go, okay, I'm going to attack these guys as well. And they thankfully keep their distance pretty significantly. This one made significant news in Portland because eventually police did see the guy. He said he wanted them to shoot him. They were unwilling to do that. But then a whole bunch of bystanders, of Portland bystanders, yelled at the police and told them to leave him alone and that they were being brutal to him or whatever when he had literally viciously attacked several people. Uh, and police were finally actually able to de-escalate this guy in Portland and get him into cuffs and get him, and he's facing just a, a litany of charges, but they didn't shoot him. They ended up getting him into custody without any more violence, and that's where this one ends. It's amazing how fast that stuff goes down, isn't it? Well, if you want to get better as a self-defender, I would love to have you think about joining our gold patron member program. We, we really appreciate our silver patron members. Our gold patron members, they get access to our monthly online seminars totally for free. So we would love to have you there so you can get all that information as well. Hit the link in the description and support the channel, would you? I think a huge lesson out of this one is that even with multiple 911 calls and, and all kinds of warning, the police just simply can't be there in time to protect you. And so you must be the primary agent in your own rescue. And I don't care who you are. I don't care you know, if you think, well, nothing bad will ever happen to me. That's true until the day it doesn't. You must be the one who is the primary agent in your own rescue. So you need to prepare for that. Now then, let's think about the fact that this guy shows up. And we always talk about the fact that the eyes are the windows to the soul, but the hands are the windows to the intent. So if you see an unknown contact coming your way, especially, you know, walking aggressively like this, take a look at the hands. What has he got in their hands? What's going on? So you can see his left hand, he's got this bag. You don't know what's in that bag, but in that right hand, he's got a big old saw. So now's when we'd want to maintain distance. And thankfully that's what the guys do later. But this lady just is like dumbfounded. What is going on here? And so you got to watch the hands and then take immediate steps to make yourself safer again. In this case, maintaining distance is the right answer. Now, as he comes in, I think, man, look at how far he is when he starts the attack. He's a good six feet away from her, and she has a second to just get away. She has a second here if she chooses to, if she orients to the problem and makes a decision to protect herself, to simply jump to our right, her left, and stay out of the way of this huge slash. But normalcy bias is just keeping her rooted in place. Of course, nobody would do that because she'd never do that to someone. You gotta recognize that other people don't think like you do and take action because instead she just stands there and so he slashes her across the head. Now I'm sure somebody's gonna ask me, wait a minute, is it okay to shoot this guy? Well, I think that, listen, if this guy is in my vicinity attacking people like that, that's clearly a threat of death or great bodily harm, hitting her in the head with a saw like that. So clearly it's not just a question of can you, but should you and must you? I think the answer is yes, I have to shoot that guy because otherwise he is gonna to continue to do great bodily harm to people. I think we have another example of normalcy bias here is that you see this lady walking away and the other girl just comes up to like comfort her. Are you okay? 
Here's the thing, friends. She put herself in mortal danger doing that, which is great because she's your friend, but you got to take action to keep yourself safe in this moment. This is a crisis moment, not a comfort moment. You got to take action to make yourself safer. So make sure that, that you're thinking through those things and going, no, wait a minute. There's a time to comfort my friend, but a time to take drastic action to, de to defend myself and to keep us both from being hurt. Because she didn't do that, she got slashed in a huge way across her arm as well. And the news story linked in the description said that, that there were some serious injuries here. He's facing several counts of aggravated assault and all that. And, and But the justice system is not going to mean that, that people are unhurt. It doesn't take away all the trauma that this causes. Only defending yourself in the moment will take that away. The right answer here, I think that, that now you got to recognize that you've seen him attack other people and notice that these guys are like, holy cow, what's going on? So if they've been paying attention and, and seeing this guy, my guess is following him or whatever to try to see, hey, what's happening or have heard him attack a couple other people. And again, you, now you got to make a good decision. And these guys do make a really good decision. And that is maintaining their distance with somebody with a short to medium range tool like this saw is a short to medium range tool. The answer is to stay out of the distance of that. I think the even better answer then is, is to have force multipliers of your own. A firearm I think is a fantastic force multiplier. This is in Oregon where, which is shall issue CCW. Anybody can get a permit if they are a good, sane, sober, moral, prudent person without a criminal record. And so I think you should, but even if you don't and won't do that, I think a good OC spray that you can get somebody from 10, 12 feet away would be a great choice here to just at least try to keep some distance. If you couldn't keep enough distance as he closed that distance to use that to try to diminish him as best you can. I think the answer here is to have a mindset as a self defender, have good tools on your person. Make sure you do your best to see the hands and do what you have to do in the moment to cover your ass.